touching Get ready to be triggered Sensitive topics Oh look, they're about to cry All consensus we'll see Nobody likes a snowflake What is Eva's problem today? Today I want to talk to you about something that is close to the hearts of many of us in this chaotic world. Gaming. Whether it's on our phones, consoles, or computers, gaming has become an integral part of our lives. However, as with any community, there are always misconceptions and issues that arise. From toxic gamers to the impact of gaming on our relationships, there are a lot to unpack. But fear not. For today, we will delve into these topics and come out with a better understanding of what it truly means to be a gamer. So let's explore the world of gaming together. What made me want to talk about gaming? First, as many of you already know, I am a gamer myself. My first system was the NES. Me and my brother Mikey had almost every gaming system except the Game Boy Advance, Dreamcast, Wii U, and PS3. I love gaming. I love the immersive worlds and story. Many games offer rich, immersive worlds and compelling narratives that allow me to become fully invested in the game's characters and storyline. This helps me escape from reality by putting me in a different world. Right now, I'm playing God of War Ragnarok, and it's so good. Gaming to me is such a stress relief. I've told you before that if I wasn't editing for the podcast and trying to meet deadlines, I'm gaming when everyone goes to sleep. And that's usually around 10, 15. That's when I pray with the boys before putting them to bed. And then I say goodnight to everyone. I go to the office, turn on either the Xbox Series X, the PS4 Pro, or the Nintendo Switch Lite. And I play whatever is next on my list because I have Xbox Game Pass and Gamefly. Then around 11.40 p.m., I pray, then I meditate, and then I go to sleep. This is how I unwind and disconnect from the stress and demands of life. Many times, these gaming companies give us something good, whether it's giving me an incredible story to immerse ourselves in or offering opportunities for me to express myself creatively. I'm talking about a game that lets me build like in Minecraft or No Man's Sky, Ark, Medieval Dynasty, Planet Coaster, Raft, or City Skyline. Or how about when a gaming studio gives us an incredible custom character creation feature like in Cyberpunk 2077, Saints Row the Third, Fallout 4, The Sims games, Skyrim, Elden Ring, or even World of Warcraft. I also love those management games, too. I don't have a PC because I can't afford it. And if you want to, you know, send me a badass PC. I'm not going to refuse it, you know, just saying. But my favorite management games were Roller Coaster Tycoon, City Skylines, Two Point Hospital, Prison Architect, Surviving Mars, Frostpunk, The Tropical Games, Stardew Valley that I play on iPad. And there are many more games that I would love to play, but I just don't have a PC, you know, because I would love to play the Ono games, the Planet Coaster, Mega Aquarium, Banished. I I can't list them all. There's too many. But one day I will have a PC and I'll be able to expand my world of gaming. Anyways, the point is that I love gaming. For many other gamers that play online together, I don't play online really. I play mostly single player games and sometimes online. But for the other gamers that play online together, gaming offers them a social connection. They can connect with others and build social relationships. Multiplayer games allow them to team up and work together and compete against each other, fostering a sense of community and camaraderie. Multiplayer games challenges them. It requires skill and strategy to master. That's why eSports was created. And for those of you boomers and Gen Xers that don't know what eSport is, eSport is competitive video gaming that is played in an official or structured setting, kind of like a basketball game. The industry has created a path that avid gamers can follow if they want to become professional gamers. It's amazing. Before you start thinking, oh, that won't make money, it already has. It's made a ton of money. According to Goldman Sachs, eSports exceeded $1 billion in revenue in 2019 and reached $3 billion by the end of 2022. So all of you parents that said gaming won't make any money, you can now shut the fuck up. These events give prize money that can range from a few hundred dollars to millions of dollars, depending on the tournament and the game. eSports is not even the only way a gamer can make money. No. 
Gamers can make money through a variety of ways, depending on their skills and expertise and popularity. You got streaming, where many gamers earn money by streaming their gameplay on platforms like Twitch and YouTube. They earn money through subscriptions, donations, sponsorships, and advertisements. Popular streamers can earn thousands of dollars per month, especially if they're entertaining like our host, King Ducky. And actually, Gammy and Two-Tone, they're streamers as well. Then you got gamers that don't stream like my two favorites, Cartoons and H2O Delirious. They have a large following. Those type of gamers earn money by creating content related to gaming just by being funny and entertaining. Those gamers usually get sponsorships. Look at Markiplier or even PewDiePie. Gamers with a large following can get sponsored by gaming companies and brands. Sponsorships can include product endorsements, sponsored content, and appearances at events. Sponsorship deals can be very lucrative, and some gamers earn millions of dollars per year. Then there's gamers that don't stream or play games for you. They earn money by creating content related to gaming, like game reviews, walkthroughs, tutorials, or even gaming news. I follow many people on YouTube that do these things. It keeps me informed about things because I don't read the news all the time. So when a new game pops up or a new announcement or something that's going on behind the scenes, I like to be in the know. So I follow these type of gamers. They earn money through ads, sponsorships, and affiliate marketing. And of course, there's game development. Some gamers become game developers themselves. They earn money by creating and selling their own games. So if you see your adult child playing games and trying to make money, shut the fuck up. It's always the people born before 1984 that has something to say about gaming. You know what? I take that back. There's even plenty of millennials that roll their eyes at the mention of gaming too, and most of them are women. These people don't understand gaming, and I've watched them bitch and complain about it on YouTube and TikTok, on news segments, and that's what really caused me to talk about this this month. It's important to know that not all baby boomers and Gen Xers dislike video games, and many do enjoy playing them. However, there may be several reasons why some individuals from these generations have negative perceptions of video games. There's the lack of familiarity. Many boomers and Gen Xers did not grow up with video games as a common form of entertainment. They may not be familiar with how to play them or may view them as a waste of time. The cultural values and interests of baby boomers and Gen Xers may differ from the younger generations who grew up with video games like myself. For example, they may place a greater emphasis on traditional forms of entertainment such as reading, watching TV, watching sports, going to the arcade, stuff like that. Then there's the negative stereotypes. Video games have often been associated with negative stereotypes, such as promoting violence or being addictive. Some baby boomers and Gen Xers may have been influenced by these stereotypes and started forming negative ignorant opinions about it. And this is important. Video games does not promote violence. I mean, if you look really hard in the dark web, I'm sure you'll find a game that will do just that. And as for being addictive, Studios in other countries are getting in trouble for promoting gambling because of all the loot boxes and the pay-to-win microtransactions. As video games have become more mainstream and popular, attitudes towards gaming will continue to shift. Many people from older generations now recognize the benefits of video games, such as improving cognitive function. There are several misconceptions that people may have about gamers, and I'm here to defend those group of people like myself that are often misunderstood and unfairly maligned in our society. Here's the first one. All gamers are socially awkward. This is the common stereotype that suggests that gamers are isolate and lack social skills. In reality, there are a ton of gamers that have active social lives and go to work and do well. Here's another one. Gaming is a waste of time. Like I said with the boomers, there are people that believe that gaming is a pointless hobby that offers no real benefits. However. Gaming can offer several benefits, such as improving cognitive skills, like I said before, fostering social connections, reducing stress, developing skills such as strategic thinking, improve reflexes and hand-eye coordination. They could develop problem-solving skills, and they could learn how to work in a team. These valuable skills can be transferred to real-life situations. And here's another one. Gamers are all young males. While it's true that gaming has traditionally been associated with young men, the gaming industry has changed and has become way more diverse in the recent years. 
People of all ages and genders play video games today. People like to think that gamers are violent because they are playing violent video games, even though research has shown that there is no direct causal link between playing violent video games and engaging in violent behavior. Another thing that non-gamers like to say is that gamers are lazy and unproductive, that it distracts people from more important tasks. This is true in many cases and does have major impacts on relationships, and I will get to that more shortly. But like any hobby, gaming can be enjoyed in moderation without interfering with other responsibilities. Most gamers do this. Gamers are a diverse group of people who come from all walks of life, who share a passion for gaming and a love for the community that comes with it. But like I said before, there are people that ruin things, and I'm talking about toxic gamers. To the non-gamers who are listening to this episode, a toxic gamer is someone who exhibits negative and often hostile behavior towards other players while playing video games. This behavior can take many forms. It includes insults, harassment, and even threats of violence. Toxic gamers often use excessive profanity, make derogatory comments, and troll people just for fun. They get a kick out of disrupting the gameplay experience of others. These fuckers cheat, use exploits, and engage in other messed up things like that to gain an advantage over other players. These pathetic pieces of shit like to target players based on their gender, race, and sexual orientation. I hate them. They are the reasons why I avoid playing certain multiplayer games. It's supposed to be fun and not stressful. They only create toxic and hostile gaming environments, and I'm not going to let them mess with my mental illness. Nope, nope, nope. I'd rather play alone. But keep in mind, listeners, that not all gamers are toxic. It's just part of the gaming culture. But it doesn't have to be. Gamers can and should continue to create a positive and inclusive gaming community and try their best to speak out against these fuckbags. So how do you deal with these toxic gamers? These fucking idiots. One, don't engage in their toxicity. It will be hard. You will be tempted to say something back, but those toxic gamers often thrive on attention and the reactions of other gamers fuels them. The best way to deal with them is to simply ignore them and put them on mute. If you have to play online like I do, sometimes I have to play online, I just simply put them on mute. Two, you gotta be a tattletale. I'm a big believer on not snitching, but sometimes... You just have to. Many online gaming platforms have systems in place for reporting toxic behavior. So if you encounter a toxic gamer, report them. Trust me, there's nothing wrong with reporting if it's legit. Don't go around reporting on people because you're a sore loser. Just report when these assholes are treating people badly. Three, gotta set boundaries if you're playing with someone who is consistently toxic. I'm not talking about strangers here. This could be a family member or friend. You have to let them know that their fucked up behavior is not acceptable and that you are not going to put up with it. If they don't let up, you just have to avoid playing with them altogether. Surround yourself with players who share the same value as you. And the last thing to do is to stay calm and composed. They're going to say the most racist, the most horrible bullshit, especially if they're a sore loser. Responding with aggression or anger can escalate things and make the whole event worse. When I deal with these fuckers and muting is not really working and they're just being hostile, I exit out and I come back and I don't give a shit if I'm with a team or a group. We're just kicking ass. I don't give a fuck. I will back out and go back in. And if you can, find their profile and just block them. These systems are made so that you never see them again or they can't contact you. Don't let toxic gamers ruin your enjoyment of the game. Focus on playing the game that you want to play and do it in a positive and respectful manner. Now let's talk about how gaming has an impact on relationships today. It can be both positive and negative. Time management. I've said this in the past. There are so many people with poor time management. If a gamer spends too much time playing games, they may neglect their responsibilities and relationships. They end up having poor performances at school or work. There's a decline in their personal hygiene and grooming. They are more irritable as they are filled with anxiety and anger all the time. Communication, which is super important in any relationship, can be affected by gaming. If a gamer spends a lot of time playing video games, they may not communicate as often as they partner would. This will cause people to argue non-stop about this shit. 
These addicted gamers like to play late into the night. They sacrifice sleep and sex just to game. And they refuse to admit that there's a problem. They get really defensive by lashing out at you for not understanding whenever the issue is brought up. And I'm not saying that you need to go stop gaming when you're in a relationship. No, you have to learn not to spend half the day just gaming. You have to be mentally available for your relationship and for your family and for your community and for your work. I get being addicted to gaming. There are times when I should be going to bed and I just want to get that one more level done and it end up being way longer than I expected. I am pretty good at it. That doesn't happen all the time because when it's time to wrap it up, I wrap it up and I look forward to continuing the story the next day. To me, there's no rush to finish a game. Yes, you're going to see all these new trailers and these new things and maybe people that you're within your group. Hey, have you played it? Have you played that? They're ahead of you. That's what it feels like. No, you take your fucking time or you do your best to split and say, hey, my friends want to play a certain game. They're playing this right now. Boom, I'm playing with them. And then on the side, just do what I do. When you're playing on your own, you take your fucking time. I'm always behind. And I love that I'm behind because, you know, from my experience in gaming today, I get to play the game. When I get to it, there's a whole bunch of updates that already happened since release. They fixed certain issues. They added a couple of things and it makes my gaming experience better. Yeah, I'm behind, but fuck it. I'm having a good time. Anyways, if you're addicted to gaming, if you feel like you lost control, if you feel like gaming has taken priority over other areas of life, and if you feel like gaming has made you feel like shit, the best thing to do is to pray about it and go to therapy. If you don't pray, then still go to therapy or counseling. They will be able to help you slowly get back on track by focusing on your offline life, by providing additional support and guidance on how to make positive changes. If you don't want to go to counseling, then do these steps that might help you. First, set limits. Do what I do. Schedule specific times for gaming and limit the duration of playing the game. Also learn to take breaks and stretch and move around. This will help you also to practice mindfulness. That means learning to be aware of your gaming habits so you can better manage the impulses. Two, find other things to do. I do more things than just gaming. You could be into sports. You could make a podcast. You could write a book. You could draw, make some music, anything you fucking want. This can provide a good balance to gaming. Three, set goals for yourself. And I'm not talking about getting 100% achievement or trophies or anything like that. I'm talking about improving the grades at school, making work your bitch, and start taking names so that you can start banking. I'm talking about starting that side hustle that you've been wanting to do. This will help provide much needed motivation and a sense of accomplishment. The last thing is to improve your physical health by eating a balanced diet, getting regular exercise, and getting enough sleep. I understand that gaming addiction is a complex issue, and it may take some time and effort to make that change last. You just have to remember to be extremely patient and also persistent. Consistency is key. So how about the advice for a couple that one is a gamer and the other is not? It is definitely possible for a relationship to thrive even though one is the only gamer. So here are some tips on how to compromise and maintain a healthy relationship without being at each other's throats and always fighting about gaming. Some things I'm going to say will feel like a repeat, but just listen. First thing you have to do, like I already said, is communication, communication, communication. You have to be open and honest about each other's feelings and concerns. If the non-gaming person feels neglected or frustrated, it is very important to talk about it. It will help you both find solutions that work for the both of you. Two, like I said, follow a routine or schedule. Set specific times for gaming, but also schedule specific times to spend together. It is very important to figure out something that you both agree on. Three, respect. The gaming partner should be mindful of the noise level and be considerate of their partner's schedule. And the non-gamer partner needs to be not a nagger to the gamer and also be considerate. And the next thing that you both need to do is to find common ground. When it's time to spend time together, find something that you both would enjoy. You could be going to a theme park, going to a movie, or going out to eat at the favorite restaurant. It doesn't matter what the hell you both are going to do as long as it's something you both love. Finding a shared interest can strengthen the bond between the two of you. 
The next thing, and this is important, you need to do your own shit and respect the other's hobbies and interests. It doesn't matter if you're not interested or don't understand what the hell they are doing. You just have to support, support, support. The non-gaming partner should try to be supportive of their partner's love of gaming. And the gaming partner should be willing to take a break from gaming to spend time with their partner. And this leads me to the final thing, compromise. Both of you should be willing to compromise and find middle ground. This could mean that the gaming partner sets a limit on the amount of time they spend gaming each day. Or the non-gaming partner needs to find ways to enjoy some alone time while their partner is gaming. Every relationship is different. What works for one couple may not work for the another. And find a compromise that is great for both of you. You have to learn how to talk honestly with no repercussions. That means, hey, I'm going to say something and the other person that's going to be doing the listening has to promise that they're not going to react horribly. They're not going to punish that person for speaking honestly. Arguing about gaming is dumb as hell. I've seen so many women complain about their man playing video games. He's always playing that stupid game. Why doesn't he play attention to me? He's so addicted to that stupid kid shit. Um, excuse me, but what happens when he does turn it off and y'all be chilling and then you expect him to watch you be on social media? You're on your fucking phone because that's what a lot of y'all women are addicted to the fucking social media when's the last time you watched something together and you didn't look at the phone once yeah that's what i thought my wife is the same she used to ask to hang out and watch something she would pick the show something we will both be binge watching together or something or maybe just a random movie and there goes the phone I had to put my foot down. I could have been doing some other shit. And and the fact that she's on the phone really didn't bother me. It was something that, you know, would happen. And she would either ask a question. Oh, what happened? What did they say? Or I'll be like, oh, shit. Did you see that? Oh, what happened? And that just proved that she wasn't really paying attention. So I did two things. I either joined her by getting my iPad and started drawing and planning, emailing, writing and shit, or I put something that I want to watch. She had no choice. I learned that she just wanted that feeling of, well, she wants something playing in the background. She doesn't want to be alone on the couch. This is her relaxing moment. So that was the deal. It's like, hey, you want to be in the right? Okay, if you just want something random in the background, let me watch what I want to watch. Or we put both put something in the background and I'm chilling, you're chilling, but I'm here with you. I get you. I got you. And she's cool about it. We're both cool about it. I love it. She's not like these bitches that would just be so mad if their man said, you know what? I want this, this, and that. Because they, lo- they they would feel like they lost control. There's nothing there, There's nothing about control. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about because it's not about me having control or my wife having control. It's just compromising and understanding each other. Those bitches, they just go on and complain. Then they just want to have a reason to make a TikTok and so that they can complain about the man gaming, thinking that people will side with her. They just keep attempting to embarrass their guy. It's frustrating. And I think if you got an issue with your partner playing video games, then you date people who do not play video games. There's a bunch of people out there that don't play video games. My wife is one of them. I mean, she'll play every now and then Sims or some type of farming thing. Or the last one she was playing is the house flipper games. But she's one of them. A lot of her friends are like that. I have family members that are like that. There's people that they're happy not gaming. They're fine with not gaming. And they know how to do other shit. Date those people. Marry those people. Because I don't understand why do y'all have to go after gamers and try to force them to stop gaming. Let me tell you a dark secret that no one has the balls to tell you. If we didn't have video games, a lot of you would be dead. Because what kept us calm would be gone. Think about it. We wake up and work is bullshit. School is bullshit. Traffic is bullshit. People are bullshit. Life is bullshit. And then we get home on our downtime. We turn on that gaming system so we could relax and take all that shit away. But when you take the gaming away, we're murdering people. I promise you that. That's what will be happen. And for all of you single people out there who ignore the gamers thinking that it will turn out badly even though the men and women that you've been dating are way worse, I think you're losing out. Why? Well, first, you will have so much free time. Free to do whatever the hell you want. So many people would love that freedom. If I'm not working on something and want to chill and game, my wife is baking and decorating cookies for her cookie business. 
Second, you don't have to worry about the gamers cheating. And I'm talking about infidelity, not video game cheating. They don't go out to the bars to get a drink with the friends and meeting people. They don't put themselves in situations that they shouldn't be in. They're more likely at home, sitting at the computer or console, just nerding out. Third, they are great with their hands. You know, quick button pressing, flicking joysticks, perfect for the bedroom. Just saying. There's a bunch of other stuff like that, like being good with the children. Uh, you, you don't have to love games to love a gamer. You just have to accept what he or she enjoy. Loving gamers is about accepting them for who they are. Let's wrap up this segment. I'm 37 years old. Why do I still play video games? Because it makes me feel like a kid again. Because it's a way for me to escape reality, to avoid depression. My mind is constantly going, so when I put those headsets on, I'm lost and immersed in the world. We were given games for one reason, not to have the most kills, not to have the most wins. We were given games to have fun. When people say, it's just a game, there's no benefit, how is this going to help you? I say, fuck you. I don't care. It doesn't mean shit to me when they say these things. To me, these are people that have no damn idea what a video game actually means. I remember being a kid playing my first video game. And I'm sure many of you gamers remember playing your first video game. Maybe it was Pokemon. Super Mario, Pac-Man, Tetris, Pong, Crash Bandicoot, The Legend of Zelda, Torok, Doom, Super Metroid, Portal, Half-Life, Grand Theft Auto, Cancelvania, Red Dead Redemption, Halo, The Last of Us, Metal Gear Solid, Tomb Raider, Street Fighter, Minecraft, Civilization, Bioshock, The Witcher, Resident Evil, Mass Effect, Final Fantasy, Fallout, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Overwatch, Call of Duty, Silent Hill, The Sims, Donkey Kong, The Elder Scrolls series, Super Smash Brothers. You get it. I can't lose every fucking game that I've ever enjoyed. I'll be here forever. But these were the games that made us gamer. They meant so much to us because it gave us so much. That's why we look forward to the next one. There are so many reasons why we love video games. We might love a character, a story, the environment, or even the soundtrack. Each video game we played meant the world to every single one of us gamers. For you non-gamers, this is what it feels like to immerse ourselves into gaming. Your mind is full of noise, like this, right? Then you put on your headphones. And then you load up a game. Let's say it's Skyrim. The soundtrack that you're listening right now is from the main menu when it starts. Now, you're ready to immerse yourself in an incredible open-world action role-playing game that allows you to explore a vast and immersive world full of adventure and danger in the northern region of Tamriel, a world filled with magic, dragons, and mythical creatures. what it feels like. I love that soundtrack. Video games gives us excitement, joy, happiness, and peace. I want to know what video game meant the most to you and why. Put it in the comments so that I can read them all. It's important to remember that not all gamers fit the messed up gamer stereotypes. People should be judged based on their individual actions and behaviors rather than the assumptions based on their hobbies. The gaming industry has been responsible for creating countless jobs from gaming developers and designers to streamers and content creators. It is a billion dollar industry that has been a driving force in the economy and has brought joy to millions of people around the world. Of course, there are gamers who may engage in toxic behavior, but that is not unique to just the gaming community. Every group around the world of all kinds, and when I say every group, I do mean every fucking group in any place and anywhere has fucked up people who always ruin it for everyone. But the majority of the gamers are respectful and kind individuals who love sharing and supporting gamers and gaming in general. You non-gamers have to look beyond the stereotypes and misconceptions that surround gamers. Instead, recognize the positive impact that gaming has had on people and society as a whole. Understand that gamers are not just wasting their time and money. They are building valuable skills, creating friendships, and contributing to a thriving industry. I will always defend 
gamers because I am a gamer. Every time I pick up a controller, every time I turn on that console, to me, it's like a really good friend holding a perfectly made sub for me saying, I've been waiting for you. Welcome. I get to set aside the pain, frustration, sadness, and concerns that life gave me that day for just a small amount of time. I get to put it away. Gaming has come a long way since its early days, from simple 8-bit games to immersive and expansive virtual worlds of today. Gaming has evolved into a vibrant and dynamic medium that offers unparalleled entertainment, socialization, and creative expression. Being a gamer today means having access to a vast library of games that cater to all interests, preferences, and skill levels. Whether you enjoy an intense first-person shooter or enjoy a deep, complex strategy games or relaxing and casual puzzles, there is a game out there for you. And now with mobile gaming, gaming has become even more accessible than ever before, allowing anyone with a smartphone or tablet to enjoy their favorite games on the go. But gaming is not just about entertainment. It has also become a powerful tool of socialization, bringing people together from all over the world to collaborate, compete, and connect. Gaming communities have sprung up around popular games, creating a sense of belonging and camaraderie that is unique to the gaming world. Through gaming, we can meet new friends, share experiences, and learn from each other. Being a gamer today is truly great. Let us embrace our love for gaming and continue to push the boundaries of what is possible in this amazing medium.